markers uh, which are also called as memory locations in Pro Tools. So <clears throat> what I've done is I've already created a marker uh, wherever I wanted to. So for example, if I want to play the song from the verse 1, all I have to do is click on the verse 1 marker. <laughs> also something I would uh, recommend and uh, to take markers to the next level you could instead of recalling a point in your session you could also perhaps recall a selection or you could probably recall and show only certain tracks uh, and just to get you started on that idea what I'm going to do is to create a memory location which just shows me let's say the bongo tracks in this song so I'm just gonna hide everything just show show up all the bongos perhaps I want to also see the bass just trying to make this all a bit big so that it fills up the screen zoom it in a bit <clears throat> and uh, now creating a memory location and this has nothing to do with time uh, because I don't want it to recall a marker or a selection. Rather, I want it to recall the fact that all these tracks are uh, shown and all the other tracks are hidden. The size of these tracks are rather large and I've zoomed into a considerable level. So I'm going to recall the zoom settings, track show, hide, even the track heights. And uh, I'm going to give this a group, assigning it to number 30. I'm calling this bongo plus bass and nothing happens you don't see anything but uh, the, 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 the magic is actually once you start mixing and when you're all over the place let's say somewhere here and <clears throat> now you want to come to your uh, bongo track and the bass track It'll be quite difficult to you know navigate scroll find the track so you, making the memory location really helps all I do on Pro Tools is hit dot 30 dot and it uh, cleared everything else from the screen and just showed me this so this is again something I use a lot uh, using markers first of all to mark points in your session and uh, of course uh, memory locations for some advanced work and finally uh, just before you start mixing uh, you're definitely going to want to add uh, some effects to your tracks like reverb delay chorus and whatnot so what I would recommend you do is uh, uh, to create about three to four auxiliary tracks and probably put in some reverb plugins a delay plugin and start setting it up uh, rather than hunting for it while you're mixing and uh, what i would also recommend you do is to put a master fader track and put a metering plugin which uh, shows you exactly what you're doing to your audio and which frequencies are getting boosted cut etc so i'm just going to do that right now i'm making four stereo aux tracks and one master fader and I'm just going to give these a name aux one I'm going to call vocal reverb vocal verb for short aux two I'm going to call drum verb aux three delay an aux 4 probably echo and uh, it's good to solo safe all these effects so you don't have to solo them individually <clears throat> and on the master fader you could probably put in a plugin or two which you would want maybe a equalizer what I like to do uh, is to uh, put in an analyzer so that I can uh, but anything which goes on in the song, let's say a bass, uh, 
Yes. Get an idea of what's going on while you're mixing. So, yeah, hope you uh, uh, learned something out of this tutorial. Catch you guys in the next video.